Okay, so welcome to another kind of HomeKit advanced tutorial. And I'm going to show you how to do three things in this video. Firstly, I'm going to show you how to run different things depending on the time of day, all in one shortcut. So maybe you want your light to be on one setting if it's the morning and a different setting if it's the evening. Secondly, I'm going to show you how to add a delay to your shortcuts. So maybe with a presence sensor, you want to say if presence is not detected, wait five minutes and then switch off the light. Um, and that leads nicely to talk about a third thing I'm going to show you, which is how to add an extra check. So with that previous one, you might want to say if no presence is detected, wait five minutes. And if there's still no presence detected, turn off a light. So we're going to do all of those things and we can do all of those on the Mac desktop. It'll be very similar if you're using an iPhone or an iPad, but I'm just using a desktop application. Um, so I can show you on a bigger screen. So this is Apple's home app and the starting point for all of these is just hit the plus at the top and hit add automation. Uh, and of course you're going to want your primary thing controlled here. This can be whatever you like, but my primary condition for these is going to be the occupancy sensor. Um, again, it doesn't matter. You might want to work out how this fits into your own automation. And I'm going to go for a stops detecting occupancy just because that fits quite nicely into all of the things I want to show you. Um, and I'm not actually going to select anything from this. I'm going to scroll all the way to the bottom uh, where we see this option convert to shortcut. Now, I don't know how long this has been in macOS. I have made videos before where I said it's not present, uh, but it is actually present in macOS. So I'm going to click that. And what that does is it brings up this Siri shortcut screen. And by default, you just have this empty control home thing at the top. So the first thing we're going to do is add a delay. So let's say when presence isn't detected, we want to wait um, 100 minutes uh, or something like that. Maybe not 100 minutes, but maybe four minutes. So we can search here for delay, uh, which is also known as wait. So we can drag this to the top because it's the first thing we want to happen. Uh, and we can change this. Now, annoyingly, I don't think we can actually type this. So we have to just hold this down constantly. So I'm literally just going to get this to 30 seconds. But obviously, you can get it to however long you like. So typically, I use kind of like four minutes, so 240 seconds. Um, for something like a timeout when someone's left an area. Um, and so you can say wait 30 seconds and then you can choose what you want your home to do and that will literally wait 30 seconds and then execute this scene. So that's a way to delay something. So if you wanted to say when presence isn't detected, which is exactly what we're doing in this one, you can wait 30 seconds and then turn off the lights. But actually, if you're waiting for presence to not be detected, you might actually want another check first just in case someone has come back in. So to do that, we're going to click scripting and we're going to choose if and just throw this in up here. So we're going to wait 30 seconds and then we're going to check something. And these if statements, as I've said before, kind of work like this. So you've got an if something is true and something will go in this gap here. So let's drag this here for now. Otherwise, you can do something else or you can leave this blank and that will go in this gap here. And then this is the end of that. Um, so this thing here that's indented slightly will only run if something we're checking here is true. So let's click this uh, and we'll select an accessory from home. Um, and this is uh, something that I find actually doesn't work very well uh, in Apple Home, which is annoying. So I'm actually going to switch to my iPhone to show you this. OK, so I've just reset this up on my iPhone. So we've got exactly the same thing we had before. We've got wait 30 seconds. And if something is true, do something to our home. So I'm going to click this condition here. And in the iPhone app, we can actually use this. So we're going to select accessory home. And again, we're going to click the uh, motion sensor. So the occupancy sensor here. And we're going to say if occupancy sensor occupancy detected is no. So remember, this shortcut is currently only going to run if occupancy is not detected. So when you move out of an area and that changes, and then we're going to wait 30 seconds. And we're going to say, is it still no? Because if I've gone back in this area, I don't want to do anything, which is why this is empty. But if the occupancy sensor is still no after 30 seconds or two minutes, whatever you set this to, uh, we're going to set our scenes and accessories. And I'm just going to go for living room lights off. Uh, and that's a scene I have created. So basically, this is a really simple way of adding an extra check and a kind of delay. So you could just have wait 30 seconds and then turn the lights off. But if you've re-entered that area, then that's not very helpful. This is really useful for adding a delay, but then also rechecking the state of something. Now we're going to build this out and make this slightly more complicated. So let's say, for example, what we want to do is do different things depending on the time of day. 
So I'm going to actually just throw away this automation and start a new one for this. So add automation. And this time we're going to do occupancy sensor again, but we're going to say detects occupancy. Um, and again, we're going to come to the bottom and say convert to shortcut. And we've got this nice new shortcut. So the first thing we actually want to do is check the date. So we're going to have a variable. So we've got three things for variables. Variables are basically uh, bits of data you store somewhere that you can access later. Uh, if you're familiar with programming, so my job is a web developer, so this is really familiar to me. But basically, a variable can be set. Uh, so basically, you say, this is what it is. Uh, you can get something. So you could say, get the variable I have named one. Uh, or you can add to it. So because we haven't created it yet, we're going to create it with this set. Um, and I'm going to drag this to the top. Um, and you can give it a name if you want to. And then for input, this is what we're going to set it to. So this is the um, thing we want to remember and come back to and check. So we're going to go for current date. And I'm going to click that because you've got a few options with dates. So you can get the date, you can get the time, you can get the name. Now, um, the different formats of these are different. So what we can do um, is we can just output something. So if I just choose stop and output, um, we are going to give this a name. So we're going to call this time. And we're going to change this to time, which appears down the bottom. So there you go. So we've got this here. I'm going to hit done. So what I can do is, yeah, so if I hit run there, you can see the time is 9.16. So that's coming from here. So this uh, variable I've created, which is named time, has the time attached to it, and it comes out like this. Uh, of course, if we were to say, actually, we want the date and do that, it will come out like this. But what I want to do here is I want to create something that says, if it's before three o'clock in the afternoon, set my light to one setting. If it's after, set it to another. Now, for that, we don't want the time because, you know, whilst we might think actually time is really useful, it's quite tricky to do something with this last bit here, this 9.17. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to go into date, keep it as date, and then we've got the option here for date format. And you can choose uh, none, short, medium, long, uh, these, or custom. And we're going to go for custom. And what you see when you put custom is this kind of line that perhaps makes absolutely no sense to your tool, but it very helpfully says at the bottom here, this comes out as uh, example, Monday, 9th of September, 2024, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, so if you want to know kind of what each of these stand for, then what I tend to do is I tend to do a Google search for PHP date format. PHP is a programming language, um, but they've got a really useful page on their website, which is this first result here, which is this page. And it has about kind of, I don't know, a third of the way down, you've got this table that has all of the little figures, so like a capital D, and what it does, and an example. So these are really useful um, if you want to reference this. So we're going to get rid of this. So what we want here, just to check the hour, is we're going to empty this out. And we're going to put in HH. And what that will do is give us the hour like that. So it's currently it's 0, 09. Let's just close that. And we can hit play again to check that's working. So we've got 0, 09. So we know that this is coming out as 0, 09. If it's 3 o'clock, it'd be 15, so on and so forth, because HH gives us a 24-hour uh, format. Uh, however, in order to check it as part of an if, um, so I'm just going to get rid of this stop and output, we need to get the number. So if we search here for get number, we can get numbers from input, which is what we want. And I'm going to drag that up here. And input, want time. And it does it automatically because we've only got one input or variable. So the next thing we're going to want is an if. So we'll grab if here. And I'm going to make this complicated eventually, but for now we're going to do a really simple one. So we're going to say if uh, numbers, which is this here, if this is, we're going to say uh, less than or equal to 15. So remember this whole shortcut only runs if presence is detected. So we're now saying if a number is less than or equal to 15, so if it's 3 o'clock or less, we're going to set an accessory. So we're going to say... Um, we actually just want the lights to be on. 
and we're going to hit done. Otherwise, that means it must be above 15, so it's the evening. Um, we're going to say something else. So again, we're going to look for home and control home, drag this into the otherwise, and we're going to set scenes, and we're actually going to say lights on, but also the galaxy light, which will set a nice color to one of the lights, and hit done. So you can see here what we've got is we're getting the time from the current date, but we're only getting the time, which is why we've got that HH set here under custom format down here. We're then getting the numbers from time. So this is going to convert whatever comes out of that into a number that we can actually check. And then we've got our if. So we're saying if the numbers, which is this, is less than or equal to 15, turn on living room lights. Otherwise, it must be above 15. So we're going to set two scenes, which of course was same as this. So turn on living room lights for me, but also set in that color scene as well. And that means if you put all of this together, this basically means if presence is detected, then all of this will happen. So I will just show you one more thing. So I'm just going to show you my actual scene for my living room presence detected. Uh, and it's got a shortcut, which is exactly what we did just now. And you can see all of the stuff that we did up here. So we've got set variable time to current date. We've got the numbers from time. So we know that's a number. And then we've got this if, and you can have more than one thing to check as part of your if. And you can have it so all these things are true. So both of these lines, you can see these little divider lines here, uh, or either one of them. So I'm saying both have to be true. So we're saying my number, so the time has to be above three o'clock and the light sensor has to have a current light level that is less than 15 lux. So it's dim enough to make it worth putting a light on. And that sets the two scenes. And then otherwise, this is where we've got a little nested if. Uh, you can see from the indentation, this is below that. So this will only run uh, if this isn't true. And we're saying otherwise, if a light sensor is less than 15 lux, so it's still dim enough to put on a light, um, and all of this is linked to when presence is detected, then we're actually just going to turn on lights normally. So this adds a couple of extra checks. So this basically sets a different color lights depending on the time of day, which is what we want here. So if it's above three o'clock in the afternoon, um, but also only actually runs any of this if the light level is less than 15 lux. And of course, this is all linked to a shortcut based on the occupancy being detected in the living room. So there you go, some advanced things using Apple Home automations and Siri shortcuts that allow you to add things like delays, extra checks, and do things based on the time of day. I hope you guys have found this video helpful. If you have, subscribe to my channel. I also have a link below for all the smart home tech that I recommend and use my own home. They are affiliate links, so if you check out any of those things and make a purchase, thank you very much because that helps this channel out. If you've got any questions, stick them below and I'll try and help you out as well. And I'll see you guys again soon.